There's a breed of characters in football that come from another planet. I'm not talking about refs, they're my chums. All fine upstanding citizens who would never get involved in adverts. No, I'm talking football managers. It would be a manager, bulging veins, throwing cups of tea in the dressing room and embarrassing themselves in TV commercials. It's not natural, is it? Okay, I'll leave it up to you. It's a great idea <laughs> and we'll settle up later. Cheers, Bob. Look after yourself. The managers, that, that's probably the best ever management advert. Bobby Robson. Graham Taylor. Terry Venables. It's not Lawrence Olivier, you don't expect that going in, do you? It's Graham Taylor, he's a football manager, he's not an actor, so, you know, you'll cut him some slack on that basis. Clara's Cakes. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. Yes, we could do that. Bobby Robson allows Graham Taylor to choose the colour of the cake, but in that jumper, it's like a test card he's wearing. I never wore a sweater like that in real life. <laughs> it's a fussy sweater, isn't it? I really liked it, yeah. Fine. Uh, what colour would you like the tracksuit? Orange? Do I not like orange? We were beaten by Holland uh, and didn't qualify for the World Cup in 94. I think that's when he shouts, Linesman! Linesman! I was heard to say, do I not like that? Do I not like that? Do I not like that? And of course, Holland uh, wear orange shirts, and, uh, and that's really what was, that was all about for you non-football people. But you've got to remember, at the time I did that advert, nearly everybody in the, in the country wasn't speaking to me. I see here it says you deliver. It says here you deliver. Now, I've never heard anybody else say says. I'd like to think it's a regional thing, but who says says? Oh, that's nice. Good luck from Bobby and Graham. <laughs> Managers are, are, are the people who take all the guilt, uh, take all the blame. When you see them in adverts, you realise that they're showmen. You know, people like Terry Venables, Bobby Robson. Believe me, I work with the guys. Somebody like Bobby Robson, when he's when he comes onto your screen, you go, oh. Mm, not bad, Nipper. Come here. Who me? And I know for sure that if an advert came on and my dad was watching it with Bobby Robson, we'd start having a conversation about football. The quality of acting uh, in terms of football uh, stars and their managers is, is pretty, it's pretty poor quality, but that makes it entertaining in itself. They are to act in what Ray Charles is to needlework. They are useless. Because they had the respect of everyone in, in, the, in, the, in the locker room and they don't want to make fools of themselves. Everyone enjoys an aid out. Thanks to Barbican, the alcohol free logger, so can I. Laurie McMenemy um, was Sunderland manager. He was also Southampton manager. It's brewed as a lager, it looks like a lager, and it tastes like a lager. But without the alcohol. You don't see an alcoholic lager around now. I watched that thinking, gosh, that did exist. <laughs> it was a drink people ordered, you know. And it's quite interesting to get a football person involved in that because it makes it all right for the boys. It looks like lager, it tastes like lager. But it's not. He slurps now, to tell you the truth. He didn't in that particular. <laughs> it's great, man. And there are some people whose personalities are so strong and whose public image is so strong that, of course, they're going to be convincing and frightening in an advert. This is a Brian Clough autograph spreading knife, especially created for uncompromising blokes like me, who always insist on having their bread buttered on both sides. Brian Clough, the greatest manager England never had. Not only is shape high in poem pronounceables, but it's low in fat. Half the fat of any margarine. You win both ways. The point about football managers is they're a bit like cartoon characters. You can't really take them seriously. They're a goldmine for comedians. Two of London's top football managers, Ron Smart and Ron Slack, are in the race to sign United star players. So it's the early morning shuttle to Manchester. What's very clever about that commercial is the fact that neither Ronnie Corbett nor Ronnie Barger speak. <laughs> they actually don't say anything. They just go... <laughs> 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 That's the funniest bit. Using this optional phone, Ron Smart gives his chairman the good news. But Ron Slack will have to wait to break the news of his signing. We've seen many a player hog the limelight with a burger in one hand and a can of isotonic drink in the other. But the players I admire the most are the ones that can use their influence to spread the good word. You know, don't drink and drive, smuggling is bad for you and all that jazz. Often the people who need to hear that kind of advice will only listen to their favourite football star. Or Jimmy Hill. A tragic, needless accident. But why did it happen? It's actually a genuine stuntman doing it. It's not a model. 
And when you when it slowed down, that bloke must have broken his neck doing that advert. <laughs> This death of a, a person, like a goal, you know, now we look at it from behind the goal. If we look again from the driver's angle, we can see his problem. They show you this accident and they show it you as though it is a, a piece of football, in the same way that kind of Brooking or Hansen would analyse this thing of, of just a motorbike repeatedly hitting the car. Visibility isn't good, but if only he'd checked again, he would have seen the motorcyclist approaching. In his analysis, Jimmy doesn't point out that uh, really the driver was pretty feeble in not seeing the bike in the first place. Everybody else could see him. Look, he's behind the lamppost. I think it's Sven driving the Cortina. <laughs> Some very early work by Sven. That car driver will be more careful next time. For the motorcyclist, there isn't going to be a next time. I appeared to do it so professionally. <laughs> Couldn't do it now like that to save my life. Think once, think twice. Think bye. That nobody ever lets you forget you've done it. <laughs> and, and especially if there's a, a strange line about which they can make fun. Think once, think twice, think bike. Which was reintroduced uh, when all the footballers started going with that girl in that Leeds nightclub. Don't you remember? <laughs>